As we mentioned earlier on, the Gauteng Premier David Makura has announced that the city of Tswane would be placed under administration. Makura said the Gauteng Executive Council met to assess developments at the city of Tswane and decided to invoke Section 139.1c of the Constitution. Makura added this meant that the city would be dissolved and placed under administration. By-elections are expected to take place within the next 90 days of the appointment of administrators. Bongani Kulisha is uh, head of Gauteng Local Government Department. He joins us now. A very good evening to you and thank you so much for speaking to us. Now, the Premier mentioned six reasons that uh, the provincial government believed that Tswani must be placed under administration. Let's just quickly go through those. Yeah, uh, good, good evening, Tsepiso. Uh, if you remember, <clears throat> the issue of Tswani has been with us for quite some time. Uh, there are various uh, uh, correspondence, a stack, corresp a stack of correspondences between us and the administration. Since the time of the previous MECs, uh, uh, Premier Mashatile and uh, Uhuru Molewa. So, so it has been coming. Uh, in, in December, a decision was taken to put Swane under Section uh, 139A, a read in conjunction with 154 of the Constitution, which effectively meant that uh, whilst uh, would continue to support Tswane, but at the same time we need to give uh, strong uh, or firm instructions on what has to be done. So we issued a set of directives, and those directives uh, were ranging from governance issues, uh, uh, service delivery issues, uh, uh, and the number of issues that we, we, we raise, institutional, institutional mm -hmm. issues uh, with, within the municipality. Now, the, 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 the instruction further said those directives must be uh, placed before council so that council collectively can then respond. Okay. But uh, I do want to focus on the reasons for taking this action to dissolve. The reasons, uh, amongst others, is that they have not honoured uh, uh, those those uh, those undertakings, or they have not responded adequately uh, to those directives. Uh, we were given two files uh, from the uh, from the speaker's office, and clearly the speaker never uh, put those uh, in front of the council. They originated from the speaker's office, and when we looked, we looked at the at the at their responses, at the quality of responses. So it became very clear that they have not... Well, to which you said it's a flagrant disregard for the Munis Municipal Finance Management Act, amongst others, a failure to spend conditional grants, uh, irregular appointment of senior managers, etc. So these are very serious charges that you put before them. But what is, what is interesting is that there's also been a back and forth between uh, the DA and ANC, respectively, about what the law says especially in relation to what is going on there. Uh, DA says it's actually the ANC that is being disruptive and has actually used its uh, governmental powers to fight political battles. So is there confusion about what the interpretation of the law No, there shouldn't be any confusion. The Constitution is very clear uh, that the prof on what the provincial government should do in the event that the municipality is failing to carry out its executive responsibilities. In, in relation to Tswane, there is no municipality, there is no executive mayor, there is no municipal manager. So the, the municipality effectively has not been functional. So why does uh, the DA's uh, John Stiernazen believe that the MEC and the executive council don't have the grants to place the metro under administration? No, it would be up to him to explain. Uh, it would be very, very interesting. I'm just saying, if you say the, the law is quite clear about it, no, so why is there a difference of opinion on there, there, There's bound to be difference of opinion because probably they, they, are, they represent a particular interest. Uh, but we're saying as a provincial government, we're carrying out our responsibilities. And, and, and the drama uh, in Tswane has been there for everybody 
to see. Now, I want to understand this. So now that you've invoked uh, Section 139.1c of the Constitution, does it mean that because you've also, the Premier has also said that you've informed the Cocteau Minister, that also has to go before the NCOP, does the possibility exist that they could actually reject your course of action? Well, the Constitution makes, makes a provision for that. So then that there would be a difference of interpretation in terms of whether or not the action is warranted? No, the, 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 I mean, the, 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 the Constitution is very clear that you have to consult a number of stakeholders. You have to consult the National Minister of COCTA. You have, you have to consult the, the, the organized uh, uh, association of local government, SALGA. You have to consult the National uh, uh, Council of uh, so, Provinces. So your action and the is Constitution not is making clear that uh, in the event that those bodies uh, reject uh, uh, the intervention, what the provincial government should do. So you do agree then that the possibility exists that your uh, course of action may not receive 100% support in the same token that the DA believes that it's unwarranted? From our point of view, we have a good case, we have a solid case. The municipality has not been functional. Uh, there are a number of things that uh, in the municipality have come to a standstill. The municipality has not been able to spend uh, 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 its conditional grants. It stands at 22%. We are left with three months. So it's very unlikely that it's going to spend. Uh, so, so, so the, and, and the issue that are in those directives, they have not responded. Fortunately, we have cited uh, some of those, uh, including uh, 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 the issues uh, that relate to Public Finance Management Act. We have asked them to provide us with the documentation uh, why, for, for those contracts. Why not move to Section 139, uh, 139.1b? Why not just take over uh, the administration yourself? So th th those are options that were available to the Executive Council. In considering the situation, they're making a, a proper assessment on the basis of the information that is available uh, at their disposal. They felt that uh, the route... Uh, would okay. be, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, the okay. head of the Gauteng Local Government Department head, Wangai Kalisha.